Praise be Jesus and Mary. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. In today's gospel passage from Matthew chapter 7, Jesus lays down the essential condition for being his true disciple, doing the will of his Father. In fact, the whole life of Christ could be summarized as doing just that. He came to do the will of his Father. His food was to do his Father's will. And so should it be for us who are to imitate Christ and have the mind of Christ. Being a follower of Christ isn't easy. You know, it never has been and never will be, at least this side of eternity. You know, during our earthly lives, there will be many difficulties to face on account of our Christian and Catholic identity. There will be times when the rain will fall, the floods will come, and the winds will blow and buffet our house, you know, spiritually speaking. You know, just uh, many different uh, trials you know, facing us as Christians. And unless our house is built on solid rock, it is on Christ himself, with a firm faith in him, and one that is active in doing his holy will, our house will come tumbling down, you know, as he uh, you know, forewarns us. But the opposite is true. If it's built on him, it uh, will resist any, any difficulty. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. Feel-good religions and do-it-yourself spiritualities are pretty numerous and popular these days. And the New Age movement is, you know, um, embraces much of these. A major characteristic of them is self-will. You know, even in... Uh, in matters of religion and spirituality. You know, I'm in control, it's my life, my will be done, ultimately. Christ calls us to do the exact opposite, and the Gospels are, are full of, of uh, passages where we hear that, that call to uh, deny our will and strive to do God's will. You know, if any man will follow me, let him deny himself, Jesus says, and take up his cross and follow me. And in teaching uh, his disciples the prayer of the Our Father, he says, Thy kingdom come, you know, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And in the Gospels, our Lord praises those who, who strive to, you know, to carry out God's will. So when he says, whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. So not self-will, you know, my will, but God's will needs to be done. That's what ultimately matters in our lives, that we fulfill God's will for us in all things, even when doing so doesn't uh, feel so good, as when uh, we are faced with uh, you know, uh, trying moments to obey God's commandments or the church's precepts or the dictates of our conscience, you know, well-formed, uh, or following through in our daily duties according to our vocation in life, you know, uh, notwithstanding the... Uh, the feelings to, uh, you know, to uh, reject these, you know, we're called to, uh, to fulfill these you know, indicators of God's will for us. So feelings are important. You know, we ought not to downplay them entirely. After all, God gave them to us. They're part of us. And they are to help us in life, but not to rule our lives, of course, not to let our feelings get the better of us, you know, um, you know to dominate you know, our reason, and let alone our faith. So life isn't ultimately about feeling good, but about being good, or we could even say about being holy. And the essence of holiness is when our wills is perfectly one with God's will. And in holiness alone can we find that perfect and everlasting happiness, peace, and joy. So may our journey this Advent you know, lead us to a greater understanding, appreciation, love and fulfillment of God's will in our lives. With the help of Our Lady, who was the perfect example, who, uh, like Christ, her son, did nothing in life apart from God's will. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. 
Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen.